All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of This Week in Charts via Carnival Trades and Wall Street for Main Street. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on CarnivalTrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it this week. So doing the video late here, um, but post-Labor Day holiday and uh, getting back into the swing of things here today. And we're experiencing a little bit of turbulence here this week, but um, last week was really kind of a nothing burger, definitely a holiday week for sure. Um, very light volume, as you can see here on the spiders. Um, there's Monday and, you know, pretty light volume pretty much all week. We did get a little uptick in volume at the end of the quarter that, you know, you get that end of quarter markup, a lot of funds, obviously moving money around in the last few minutes of the day does increase volume. We got a little nice pop on Friday, although we are giving a lot of that back, actually really all of it back here today as markets are um, experiencing a little bit of turbulence. You know, we're, you know, down a little bit here, 1.5%. Um, not heavy volume, though. We're not seeing heavy distribution, but we are seeing a little bit of a dip right now. And, um, you know, it's it's generally that kind of time of the year, right? So we are looking for, um, you know, we are coming into the month of September here. And you can actually see the election um, election year kind of seasonal averages here. Um, right now we're sitting at, so this would be our current uh, fractal is the green. And you actually can see there's not really that much of a decline on average when there's a sitting president running and we know the reasons why that is but even it's just the aggregates right um generally right around september you know you start to get those declines i am seeing a lot of people post these charts though i'm obviously adding to that right now so um the reason i say that is it's not really sneaking up on anybody everybody knows that it's september time and um, this is when markets tend to get weak that said um is there a lot of alpha in that if, if everyone knows it? Uh, maybe, we'll, we'll see here. Um, right now, we do have to respect the daily pattern here. And um, right now it's still bullish. So we still have, you know, we're above the moving averages, price is consolidating through time and not price. Um, the 20 MA is catching up. And um, you can make a case you have a, you know, a flag pattern here, right? So let me just get rid of this uh, extra line here. Uh, you can make a case that right now you're just kind of inside of a, you know, a flag pattern from this big up move. And uh, I still have a target of 570 on SPY. So I still think that can get achieved. Um, I do think we probably will end the month red, though. Um, you know, we've had a really good run here. And again, seasonality does come into play. But, you know, that doesn't mean they can't take this up one more time here. Again, I'm seeing a lot of people start to front run that seasonality. And a lot of the time when that happens, you can get kind of a, you know, a fake out and then you get that last kind of push up. So that's kind of what I'm expecting right now. But um, overall, again, definitely uh, don't take anything for granted. We are coming into September. Um, the Fed has obviously confirmed that they are going to cut rates in September, <clears throat> which is in a couple of weeks. I believe that is the I believe that's the 18th. Of September, um, which is right during September OPEX week. So that should be a lot of turbulence there. We do have some jobs data coming out this week as well. Um, we did have a little bit of ISM data this morning. That is allegedly part of the reason why we're dipping down. Um, but we have jobs data later this week, and that will move the market. They always seem to cook those books and then uh, just kind of revise them later. So again, I'm a little, again, I'm respecting this daily pattern as bullish. And again, Market seems to like the uh, the headlines as uh, as opposed to the revisions, so I'm going to go with that until proven otherwise. Here, if we get a sell signal, um, then we can look for some downside. You know, as, as we get into September and October in those fall months. But right now, just respect this pattern here, and um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that at the moment. So, um, triple Q's here, obviously a little bit weaker. Again, much more tied to Nvidia, and uh, you can see Nvidia into a big level here today. I've already got that marked in there. Um, the 110 handle, which is a 50% FIB retrace. We also have the 100 moving average. Um, so there's definitely some daily chart support in here. We can just get rid of that right now. And if the NVIDIA does bounce here, it's going to help the market. I mean, it's, it's such a large company at this point. We also have some weakness, though, in Apple and Microsoft. So it's not just the N NVIDIA tape, but obviously that is dragging down the triple Qs. And we are uh, slicing below that breakup bar. So definitely a weaker sign there for the Qs. The spiders are definitely in better shape at the moment. The Russell 2000, pretty good outside candle here, but again, it had a really, really good recovery the last week or so. And, um, you know, we just kind of went sideways last week and a little bit of a, a down test here today. 
Um, this is still in decent shape, I think, as long as it's above 210. So IWM's hanging in there for now. Uh, the Dow closed at a new fresh all-time high, all-time weekly closing high, and monthly closing high on Friday, for that matter. And um, again, we're retracing today. A lot of things are. So again, we'll, we're going to leave it at that for now. And just, you know, default to this spider's, you know, bull pattern here that is sideways. Until that gets taken out, if that fails, if we start breaking below, I would say 550. Um, then you're, then we're starting to get into trouble. But as long as we're above that, you could take this as just bull consolidation in the short term. That doesn't mean we can't sell later in the month. Um, but right now in the near term, just respect that. Um, SMH here, again, really good outside move down 6%. This is a big move for SMH. 6% is a big move for the SMH. And again, you're going to see here very much like the NVIDIA chart right into that 50% FIB. So this basically is the NVIDIA chart at this point. Um, but you can see here right into that 50% FIB. We'll see if it gets a bounce tomorrow. So SMH coming in. Uh, cloud is still pretty strong, though. IGV still remains very strong. It's down one and a quarter on the day. But again, I, I like the up move and sideways chop. Nothing really wrong with that. So right now, the weakness is coming from semis, and it's coming from certain MAG7 names. It's not all of them. Um, you still have some strength in stocks like Netflix. It's down today, but it's, had, it's got a good pattern here. Um, Meta is holding up reasonably well. Amazon was holding up well. We actually day traded this on Friday and uh, made a nice little chunk of change on that last week. But um, this, you know, this chart's still holding up okay. It's inside of Friday's range. Um, it's really just the Apple, Nvidia, and um, Microsoft to an extent. Google's um, a little bit on the weaker side also. So it's Select Mag Seven and and uh, and semiconductors, whereas cloud, you know, so it's not all areas of technology per se, as I think cloud is still. Um, in very good shape here. All right, anyway, transports here. Again, you know, down on the day, but not terrible. It's nicely off the lows. And again, weekly inside, you know, I should say daily inside candle. So we have the breakup bar from August 23rd, and we're inside of that on a closing basis. So there's there's sectors of strength here. Again, it's really relegated to that that MAG7 uh, for the most part that we're seeing the weakness. And not, not, not everything, but that seems to be the biggest area. All right, so let's get over to rates here. And um, let me get my other charts up. So rates are actually taking um, a little bit of a hit today. Um, again, we had some data out. Market definitely a little worried. We are coming to jobs number. I'm wondering if that's getting priced in though. They are off the lows. And we had some ISM data out and that marked the low in bonds, in, in, uh, sorry, in bond yields, bond prices stalling out. Um, you can see here fives and twos, so short end still a little bit weaker. The tens have a little bit better of a pattern, um, if you ask me. I think the long end is still holding up okay, and I think the risk here is that a lot of people, right? You know, rate cuts are not sneaking up on anybody. Economic slowdown, slowdowns not sneaking up on anybody. I think the long bond personally is a little crowded here. We may be seeing a higher lows here. If the ten year can get back above four percent, it's going to be a very painful trade. And um, that could get all the way up to 420 um, before you re reach major resistance. And you might say, well, what if there's a what, if there's a slowdown? Why is that the case? Well, if a lot of people are already positioned that way, which I believe they are. Um, you can see a squeeze. So I think that's a possibility. I'm not um, necessarily making that call. I have a general lean towards that, uh, but I'm not in that trade personally. But I do think that is interesting. Um, another thing about rates here is. We're still on that um, CPI timeline from the 70s uh, versus 2020s. So you can see here at this point, up move, pull back, um, and the Fed's cutting rates right into that time frame. So again, that could be a headwind for the long bond. If we get more of a stagflationary effect, we could get recession, but if we get a stagflationary effect to that, um, TLT might not be the best place. Just food for thought. Um, home builders had a pretty decent week uh, last week. Outside moved down today, though. Um, still above all the moving averages and still holding up well, especially on the weekly chart. But definitely backing off here today. VNQ continues to be one of the strongest sectors. This is green in a tape that's down quite a bit today. So VNQ up 10 cents. So commercial real estate still hanging in there. And uh, I think this can get to 97. So VNQ still holding up. Uh, financial still acting well also. Uh, granted, XLF is down on the day. It's nothing terrible at the moment. And it had a new monthly, weekly, daily, all-time closing high. 
last Friday. KRE also holding up. Again, you see the inside bar there with volume, and we're inside of that. So if financials are hanging in there, again, respect that. I know September is historically a down month, but with financials holding up, just continue to respect that until they tell us not to. Broker-dealer is outside move, but again, it's basically at all-time highs. So oil in the news today, um, big move down. Outside move, um, you can make a case, it's kind of like an inverted cup and handle. So there's your your pivot down, and then there's, there's like your inversion of the cup and handle. Um, definitely weak, and it's selling on volume too. So I would be careful with oil here. Um, I'm just going to say 66 or so right now. That's the best I can give you on oil at the moment. If we look on the weekly, you can see it's in danger of it is breaking this wedge right now. So we'll see where it ends the week. It has time to it has time to rebound, but just be careful with oil here. I have not really traded it outside of like quick scalps and stuff uh, very much lately. It's been in a range. A lot of the time when you start to break a range, it can be a fake move too. So um, I just I would say give it the downside bias as the trend is down. Probably say upper 60s right now. Um, XLE though, on the other hand, this is a positive divergence here. So notice how, look at where oil is. It's basically at the same low as August 5th and, and June 4th, essentially. It's the same price, right? $70 a barrel. Whereas we look at XLE, um, this has a much, much higher, here's your August 5th low, and we're way above that. So XLE is still holding up. Um, maybe some of that's a safety play, to risk off play, you know, an Exxon, stuff like that. Um, dividend plays, it's possible. Um, but you also have it on XOP as well. So XOP way off the August 5th low. OIH is the weaker one. So that's kind of having that, that looks closer to oil, but I still think there's a ton of support for OIH at 280. I don't really see us going much through that. But energy definitely weaker. And the market's acting like it. Um, CCJ down 7% today. So possible lower highs there. It had a nice recovery last week. Uh, or should say the week before. And then last week we pulled back. So outside move here today. There is still room for higher lows on this though. So it's not dead on arrival yet. But definitely want to see a higher low here. Um, or at least a double bottom. You can see the NJ and the NM. Same thing. Selling on volume here. So uranium on the weaker side now. Um, we've also got Nat Gas um, coming back in last week, but good, getting a really good bid today. Um, we actually, I called this out in the trading room this morning, and um, I missed the entry. I know some of, some of my members got it, um, and they're nicely in the money. Should be in the money about 10, 12 cents there by now. But um, yeah, nice pop on Nat Gas, and it's going up on volume. Again, it tends to bottom around late August-ish, and it trades up into November. So I would be looking to play bull maybe on dips here. Um, you know, if that's your thing, into, uh, I would say, kind of early November. But nice reversal there for Nat Gas. And uh, it's hanging in there for now. Here's the continuous if you want to look at that. I don't really like looking at it, but it's technically not where it trades all the time with these big con uh, contango gaps. But anyway, um, dollar index here. Uh, again, V-shaping. So I talked about this being crowded a week ago, and it, I think it is. So we went right into this big level here. Look at how many times. One, two, three, four, now five times that's been defended. Weekly 200 moving average. I was really hoping we would pierce it a little bit more, maybe like a 99, 99.50. Um, I was looking for a long entry and just didn't get it. But dollar index here, V-shaping. Uh, big test here at 102 to 102.15. So I don't think that's going to get through on the first try. I think you're going to have to pull back and put in a higher low. If it does that, it can go higher. If it doesn't, then we got to look, go back and look at the lows here and then maybe back down to 99, 99.50. But dollar with an impressive bounce. Um, we can look at the yen if you'd like. Lower high, higher low. So if this firms up, it'll start head, it should start to head back to 150. But we're still a ways away from, from, from that for now. Uh, gold here. Dipping today, but... You know, it's still just fresh off of all-time highs. Nothing wrong with this pattern whatsoever. So there's really nothing <laughs> There's really nothing wrong with gold at all. Um, GDX is down, though. So GDX a little bit weaker. 
I still think this should be, um, you should be buying dips on this. Silver also down quite a bit today on volume. So that's a little bit on the weaker side. And you can see SIL and SILJ both outside moves. Platinum also down quite a bit too. This is starting to also get attractive as is palladium, which I think is probably bottomed. I like the monthly close. I like what it did there, how it spiked the low again, and then it came back up on volume. Uh, copper, really good outside move. They finally got me out of my runner position on copper. It was a nice trade nonetheless, uh, but really good outside move here today. And again, the market's worried about a slowdown. Again, we're going into a lot of jobs data. So I, I mentioned this, everything I'm mentioning about commodities and oil and the S&P, um, just be aware that they could be setting this up, you know, setting us up for a sell here um, right before they rip it higher on, you know, a better than expected jobs report. So just be aware we're down into data as opposed to up. Uh, but anyway, Bitcoin here, a sideways week after a, a decline on Tuesday. Well, let's just say it was decline on Tuesday and then sideways for the last week. Um, daily charts, very messy. Weekly chart is very bullish. So I really like this pullback pattern on the weekly and I like it even more on the monthly. And again, this 20 moving average on the monthly is catching up the price. And when it does, I think it's going to be fuel. So if you just pull back into that, I think Bitcoin can go a lot, a lot higher. But right now it's just a pullback pattern, messy daily chart. Um, you want to see it back above 63, 63.2 um, to advance. You could make a case you have a bear flag there on the daily. You know, next level's down around, I would say, like 54, 55. But very messy daily chart, but bigger picture, I still think is very bullish. So again, back over to the spiders here. Again, just respect this daily pattern here. Yes, it's the month of September. Yes, we generally get declines, but um, they can still take this up, you know, with positive jobs, a positive jobs spin, rise the numbers later. The market generally doesn't care too much about the revision. So, um, but we'll see what we get here. Um, good dip here to start the month. And um, again, lots of jobs data later this week, starting tomorrow with jolts. So we'll see if that uh, has any bearing. I would say 550 though is kind of your level there on the SPY should we get there you know tomorrow or or Thursday. But it is short and weak. Um, again, volume still fairly on the lighter side. I think that will start to pick up the more we get away from the holiday here and get uh, deeper into September. But uh, again, right now just default to the trend here um, until this fails or, or 550 breaks. So anyways guys, gonna wrap it up here. Again, you guys don't forget to come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on CarnivalTrades.com and I'll see you guys all next week.